All right, welcome, folks. Well, let's talk about what's different between the atoms. I have a hydrogen again, and I have a helium. We used to think that they were small little circles, little balls, and that they each were just unique, and there was just something naturally different about them, and that was it. We now know they are actually made up of more things. We call them subatomic particles, so smaller than the atom. Those particles are protons, electrons, and neutrons. Protons get the symbol P with a plus, electrons get the symbol E with a minus, neutrons get the symbol N with nothing. Protons are actually positively charged and the electrons are negatively charged. Think magnets. You've got a north end and a south end. They, they have opposite attractions. This is what's going on with protons and electrons. Well, what happens is, at the very center of an atom, your protons, which I'll draw as a circle with a plus, they'll hang out with any neutrons, which we'll draw as just a circle with no charge. This is the nucleus. They are stuck together in the very center. Outside of them are the electrons. So the electrons aren't in the nucleus. They are, and this is not to scale, they are very far away. If you had a proton the size of, say, a, a pea, a little green pea food, the electrons would be 100 meters away by comparison. Like they are very, very far from the nucleus by comparison for their size. This is a nuclear model of chemistry. That there is a small little gathering in the center of all your protons and neutrons, and then way outside of them are your electrons. Well, depending on your mix of protons, neutrons, and electrons, you have different types of atoms. So let's talk about what any of those changes mean. First and foremost, protons define the atom. So what that means, if I go to hydrogen and I look at its number of protons, well, it's one. Helium's number of protons is two. We'll go back and look at the periodic table real quick. Hydrogen is the first element. It is the first element because it has one proton. Helium is the second element because it has two protons. If anything ever changed the number of protons, they would be a different atom. In fact, that actually does happen rarely. Our sun takes two hydrogens and smashes them together to make heliums. By squishing two protons together, it makes a new atom. That's what the sun actually does to make heat. It's fusion. If we look number three over here, lithium. Lithium is the third element. It has three protons. Beryllium is the fourth element. It has four. Boron is the fifth element, it has five, and so on. Carbon has six protons, nitrogen has seven protons, oxygen has eight protons, and so on and so on. The number of protons tells you what the atom is. So all heliums, no matter what else changes, all heliums have two protons. All hydrogens, no matter what else happens, always have one. Well, let's look at that atomic symbol for a minute. We're going to need to do a few more things to it if we want to talk about our electrons and our neutrons. So let's draw a generic element symbol. So this could be a hydrogen, it could be a helium, I'm just going to call it X. There are four spaces around our element symbol where we put information. So around our heliums, 
or our hydrogens, we could fill in info in those spaces if we want. We've done this once. The lower right told us the number of atom in molecule. So when we had H2, we filled in the lower right with the number of hydrogen atoms. So that's what the lower right tells us. What's important for electrons, neutrons, and protons are the top two, though. The top left is the number of particles in nucleus. Remember, only the protons and the neutrons show up in the nucleus. So if I have H1 and I have H2, well, let's think about drawing it. I'm a hydrogen, so let's just look at our protons and our neutrons. I'm a hydrogen. I must have one proton. So both of them, there is one proton. And our first one over here on the left, well, there's only one thing in the nucleus at all. So I've already used it. It's used with protons, so there are no neutrons. This would look like a nucleus with a single proton, and, well, we haven't discussed the electrons yet. The electron would be around. But over here for H2, well, two things are in the nucleus, one of which was used by a proton. Well, that means there's one left over. So that leftover one must be a neutron. This would mean I have one proton and one neutron, and then my electrons around them. This can happen. You can have different numbers of neutrons on the same element. Same element with different neutrons. Are called isotopes. So these are both isotopes. They are both called an isotope. They are both isotopes of hydrogen. Because they each have only one proton, they are hydrogen atoms, but they are different isotopes of hydrogen. One having more neutrons, one having less. So that upper left symbol is really useful for figuring out what's going on in terms of the neutrons on your atom. Well, let's talk about that top right. The top right is the number of charge on atom. So let's think about these again. Charge, that means our overall pluses and minuses. When I think of either of these, I have a single plus and a single minus in both cases. Well, if I plus one and minus one, I end up at zero. There's no charge on those. And you'll notice we didn't put any charges in the top right corners. I should use a different color. Let's try that. So those hydrogens, they had one electron and one proton, so they had no charge and it was left blank. But it is possible for you to have things like hydrogen plus. Well, let's say it's H1 plus and H2 with a plus. Well, let's think about our protons, our neutrons, but let's also think about electrons this time. As before, each hydrogen has one proton. That is what it means to be hydrogen. Our first 
Hydrogen has no neutrons. It only had one thing in the nucleus, so it has zero neutrons. Our second hydrogen here has two things in the nucleus, so one is a proton. The remaining one is a neutron. And now, my hydrogen needs to be plus one overall. Well, it comes with a single plus. If I have any minuses, that will go away. So I must have no minuses. And so for both of these, this would look like just the nucleus. There's a proton, or there's a proton and a neutron. There are no electrons around them. If you had an element like, let's say, helium-3, and we're going to give it a plus charge. Just for comparison, let's look at helium-3 when it's neutral. Well, there's protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons, neutrons, and electrons. To be helium is to have two protons. So each of them must have two protons. They are helium. Well, there's three things in the nucleus, and only two of them were taken up by protons. So there's one left over to be a neutron, and that's true in both cases here. And now we go to electrons. Well, I need a single positive overall, and I have two positives from my protons. So I need one of those positives to go away. I need one negative charge, so I need a single electron. This would look like a proton, a neutron, a proton, and a single electron around them. If I go and look at my other helium here, it doesn't have a charge. So there are two positives. I need to make them both go away, so I need two negatives to make them go away. Basically, plus two minus two is equal to zero. So, for this symbol, for HE3 with no charge, I must have one proton, one neutron, my second proton, and around it would be two electrons. So this is how we look at the symbol in order to determine what the parts of the atom are that we're talking about.